This huge improvement in rideability and performance is the result of a collaboration between Smilo Motors, Makers PEV, and Innovative Electronics US. The Foxtrot is set up to mount in the original holes and use most of the original connectors. There were some modifications I had to do, which included swapping out the T-connector for an XT60 and replacing the momentary power switch with a latching power button. On this board, the first step is going to be removing the fender. If your board doesn't have a fender, you'll still have to remove the three screws in those positions on the foot pads you're removing. Then remove the trim piece, all the screws around the edges, and the rubber pad. Next are the screws holding on the top plate covering the motherboard compartment. This will generally have some kind of a sealant so you may have to gently pry it. If you are also replacing or upgrading the battery, you want to remove the rear pad, trim, and plate as well. Normally you would go in from the bottom, but since we're working from the top for this project, this is actually going to be easier. This gives us really easy access to the battery. Now we remove the four screws that hold the old controller in place. This allows us to remove it. If you have a model with the older controller and not the enclosed silver one, this whole upgrade process will be slightly different. This would be the bottom plate of your board. You can see this is where your sensor is. This is the rear. This is going to mount on here just like this in those existing holes. You can see here I've included the long screw. It's got the spacer, the washer, and a locking nut. So you just pull these screws out, run them up through the bottom here, slide this on, and put the pieces together all the way to the screws there. And the mount it will be here and this is again the bottom of the front of your board this is another option for mounting as well the bottom plate is aluminum and can act as your heat sink these plastic inserts are important to help prevent damage to your controller when tightening down your mounting screws and nuts regardless of whether you use additional heat sink a thermal pad is essential it helps to better transfer heats between the MOSFETs and plate. Once it's seated, add all of your nuts to your threaded studs, finger tighten them down. Next, you'll gently snug them down with a socket wrench or bit driver, being careful not to over tighten. Once the new controller is securely mounted, it's time to start plugging in the clips. You can basically plug them in in any order. Generally, you're going to want to plug in your battery, your power, last. This is just a quick guide reference. You'll thread your wires through the holes in the sidewall there over into the compartment with your controller. We'll start here with the rear sensor and rear LEDs. Next, we'll plug in the front LEDs. Now we plug in the hall sensor connector and clip that into the board. Phase wires can be plugged in in any order and the controller will map them. We've had to swap out for a latching power button here, and he was able to get off the front nose piece. Often these four screws don't want to come out, you'll have to drill it out. There is another option. So there are two ways to install hook this power button into your front piece. If you can get it off, like I have, once you get these screws out, don't put them back in. There's plenty holding it back. There's plenty holding it on. If you have to drill these out or whatever, I filled these holes with hot glue, silicone, because there's already six screws that hold this thing on. So if you do get it off, then of course, 
unscrew that. This clip pops off here. So you would unscrew this all the way. Put it in. Put the nut on the back. And then plug this clip back into it. Making sure that you follow the orientation of positive negative for the red and the black. If you can't get this off, then your power button is going to be here. This is the bottom. So your original power button is going to be here. What you can do is you can take this out and then shove the whole thing through there and hot glue it. Once you've threaded that through again, it's a pretty tight fit but you can make that go in there. And again, a little bit of hot glue around that'll seal it up. Profile isn't terrible. And it's way easier if this thing is stuck on there than trying to fight with it. If you do get it off, you'll then replace these six screws in the top and bottom. Your sensor will be in the front compartment, so run it through the pass-through before plugging into the controller. Better. Make sure your wires are all neatly tucked, nothing pinching, and then replace the screws on your top plate. If you replace the battery, you'll also replace this back plate. Next are the pads and trim. Honestly, you'll generally want to test everything before putting all this back on. We're pretty confident here. Ride testing is obviously much easier fully assembled. It really doesn't take long to take these off if we have to. Remember to use a P1 Phillips and low torque settings to avoid stripping these screws. If this happens, it's a good sign. Now the install is complete, we're going to move on to our VESC tool settings. This is going to include your IMU and motor detection. We want the board fairly level with the wheel able to free spin. For our calibrations, we're going to begin by connecting the board to VESC tool, either on the desktop or through your phone app. If the board is turned on, it should show up and allow you to connect. If not, go to the connection tab and we'll hit refresh to try and get it to show up. You may have to click this a couple of times. Once it does show up, go ahead and click that connect button on the far right there. Now it's connected, we can see it show up right here. Then we'll go down to the firmware tab and check our hardware firmware. Now we're going to add a few preliminary values before we go into motor detection. So go here to the FOC tab, advanced. Then we're going to drop this zero vector frequency down to 24 kilohertz. We're now going to go to the Welcome and Wizards menu, and then down to Setup Motors FOC. Here you want to click No, otherwise it will erase any custom settings you have. Select EUC and hit Next. Then select Large Outrunner, Advanced Override. Then we're going to change the sensorless ERPMs to 2000 and our motor poles to 30 for the T3. Go ahead and choose yes here after reading it. Then we input our battery information, which for the 60 volt battery in the T3 and T2, it's 16 poles, 7 amp hours. Once that's inputted, go down to next. Read this and click OK. We'll address this in the settings later. You're going to choose direct drive here. And then the T3 X5 actually has a wheel diameter of 305 millimeters. Uncheck this box and hit OK. It should now be doing motor detection. The board's going to make some weird noises and the tire may spin. If you look down in the bottom right corner, you should see the success. Either of these values are hundreds higher than this. You may have to rerun motor detection. So we'll hit OK and then check motor direction. It goes forward and reverse when hitting these, you're okay. If not, you may need to invert. If it's working correctly, go ahead and hit finish. And that should complete our motor detection. Now we'll work on setting up our IMU. In the far left column, we'll select the IMU page. 
Then we're going to change the sample rate here to 832 hertz. Change the IMU filter to medium. Excel low pass filter Z to 1 hertz. Drop the accelerator confidence decay down to 0 0.02. Then we'll change our Mahoney KP to 2. If you end up having grinding issues, dropping that to a 1.8 can help. We're going to change our IMU mode to Mahoney and put the Magic Beta at 0, 0.0. If you mounted it as shown previously in this video, you're going to change your IMU rotation yaw to 90 degrees. Then hit the right app config button. You should see confirmation in the bottom right corner. Remember, after you make any changes, you have to make sure to write the config before you leave that page or tab or it will not save. If the orientation and everything is correct, this should be the result. Now we're going to go up to Welcome in Wizards and then to Set Up IMU. And first is our gyroscope calibration. Like it says here, it can be in any orientation sitting however, it just needs to sit stable. Once your values stay really close, you can go ahead and hit save. Next we'll click on accelerometer calibration. Then you're going to slowly and gently position your board, nose straight down, standing up. And gently move it until you get your highest non-spike value. Should be right around 1, but not necessarily. And just gently move it back and forth from this full position until you get a stable max. Again, you want to avoid sudden, jerky, or quick movements to avoid spikes in this value. And then once it stops going up, we will hit save. For the y-axis, you'll be laying the board on its side as shown here. And same as with the other axis, you're going to do it gently and allow it to climb until it reaches a stable max value. Most of these max values are going to be real close to 1, but that's not always going to be the case. Once it stops going up and we hit a stable max, go ahead and save. For the z-axis, we're going to hold the board close to level in a riding position, gently raising and lowering the nose once it gets closer to its max value to bring it up to the very max it can go. Again, avoid sharp movements to prevent spikes in this value. If you do happen to get a crazy high spike, you can hit the clear max button here to reset the value. Once you find a stable max and it stops going up, you're going to go ahead and hit save. And this should complete our accelerometer calibration. Now that the motor setup and IMU calibrations are done, we're going to install the float package that's custom for the Trotter Mag Wheel and the Ghost Milo. You'll browse to find where you have this saved and then click install. Once it installs, you'll see confirmation in the bottom right corner, and you'll have a new tab on the left called Float Config. This is basically going to take the place of most of your app settings and is configured for self balancing boards. Here we're going to start by going to the Specs tab and setting up our foot sensors. The sensors carry voltage all the time and disconnect when you activate them, opposite to how a lot of pressure sensors work. Because of the sensor setup on the mag wheel and ghost Milo, we need to invert the ADC logic. So we're going to make this true. We're then going to change the ADC 1 and 2 switch voltages to somewhere between 1 and 2 volts as our cutoff. This gives enough of a threshold to prevent any kind of errors. Now we set our voltage thresholds based on the battery we're using. 
For the T2, T3, and X5, the max charge is 67.2. So we're going to put this at 68.5. And we're going to set our low voltage threshold to 48 volts. This is going to tell the board when to give tilt back warning for low and high voltage. Before leaving this tab, make sure you hit right down there on the bottom. Now we're going to disable the float package by going here and clicking true. And adjust a few more parameters. And remembering to hit right. Now we're going to head back over to the FOC menu and to the general tab. To start with, we're going to take whatever this value is and cut it in half. If you notice motor crunches or grinding, this is a good place to start with adjustments. And for this, we'll hit the right motor config button on the right there. Then on the left, we're going to go to motor settings general, and then right on over to the voltage tab. Properly setting these values is extremely important, both to prevent random cutouts and to protect your battery. You'll start your cutoff start where you're comfortable, generally around 3 volts or so per cell, and your voltage cutoff end is going to be 2.5 volts per cell. This is when the controller is going to no longer run on the battery voltage and will cut out. Giving yourself a decent buffer zone is always a good idea. Now we're going to go back to the float config menu here on the left. And we are going to re-enable the float package by changing this to false. Make sure to hit right before leaving this tab and your board should be ready to go. Now we're going to test it. Row, row. Getting some really odd behavior, jerky movements, and continuing to stay engaged after releasing the pads for far too long. You can see it kind of rocking back and forth here. I double checked a bunch of settings trying to figure out what was causing this and finally came upon a solution. As simple as it sounds, all I had to do was rerun the motor detection. I actually had to do it two more times and after the second time, it started riding like a dream. I think I somehow nailed it the first time with the settings on this one. It's got plenty of power and rides so smooth. Gone are the jerky back and forth movements of Trotter's past. We now move forward into a bright and smooth future.